Hey, what's up everyone? This is Greg. Welcome back to our beginning core data video tutorial series. In this video, we'll look at relationships, how to model those relationships between entities, and how to link the actual data objects together from code. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video and challenge. You'll be able to relate a device to a person and then see the owner of a device, and also a list of all devices owned by a particular person. Relationships let you relate objects to other objects in a structured, well-defined way. For example, if you had a pet entity with objects representing all the pets you own, and then a food entity with objects representing all the different brands of pet food you buy, you could set up a relationship so that each pet object would have a favorite food relationship that links to a food object. In this direction, it would be a one-to-one -one mapping. That means each pet has just one favorite food. Once you have the NS managed object for that pet object, you could access favorite food just as if it's another attribute. Only instead of a string or an integer, you get an instance of the food NS managed object subclass. Most relationships have an inverse as well, where you can think of the relationship in the other direction. In our example here, let's say you had a reference to a particular food object. Since multiple pets could have that particular food as a favorite, from the food's perspective, there's a one-to-many relationship. You could call this something like pets favorited or something like that. That means given a food, you could find out which pets in the object graph have it set as a favorite. The great thing about this is it lets your app logic go either way. You could have a pet object and set its favorite food, or with a food object, you could add a pet to the pet's favorited set. Both of these operations will do exactly the same thing in the end. Let's take another step back and look at an aspect of the core data stack. In the challenge for video number one, you updated the data model. On running the app, you might have seen a bunch of errors in the console since there was a change in the model and the existing data on disk didn't match what was in the latest data model. In the upcoming intermediate series, you'll learn some more advanced techniques to deal with this migration of your data across model changes. Luckily, Core Data has something called lightweight migrations. If the changes to your data model are minor, such as adding a new attribute or adding a new relationship, this is something the Persistent Store Coordinator can handle for you as long as you enable the options to do so, which you'll see in the demo coming up. Let's start off here in the data model where we're going to add the relationship between a device and a person. We've got the device entity open here, and I'm going to hit the plus here under Relationships. And we want a device to have an owner, and the destination here is going to be a person. And then over here in the inspector, I'm going to say, I'm going to leave optional here because we'll see it's possible a device could not have an owner. And then just note here that the type is to one, which means a device will have one owner. Next, we'll need to set up the inverse. So I'm going to go to the person entity. I'm going to create a relationship. And a person can have many devices. And the destination here is going to be device. And this is actually not going to be optional, because if a person has no devices, it's just going to be an empty set here. And then the type I'm going to make sure is set to, to many, because a person could have many devices. And now that I have both of the relationships, I'm going to set the inverse here. So the inverse of the device's relationship is going to be owner. And now if I head over to the device entity, you'll see that the inverse has been set here to devices on the other end. Now that we've updated the model, we can ask Core Data to update our NS managed object subclasses. And remember, it's going to update these two files, the plus Core Data properties. You can see right now, a person only has a name. Let's go ahead to the data model. I'm going to say create NS managed object subclass. We'll go ahead with our data model and we want both of the entities to be generated. Just make sure that goes into the right group here. And now you'll see it's updated those two files. 
And now if I look at our device, we've got this owner property, which is a person. And if I look at the person, we've got this devices, which is going to be a set. And anything that I've changed here in the device.swift, for example, this custom computer property that I added in the previous challenge is still here untouched because Core Data and Xcode have only updated these two extensions. If you remember from the first video, we actually made the device type and the name here, we unchecked optional to make them required. But again, the current NS Managed Object subclass generator doesn't respect that. So I'm actually going to remove these question marks because these aren't going to be optionals. If I go to the device, I'll do the same thing. But this one I'm going to leave because, like we said, it's possible that the device could not have an owner. So I'm going to leave this property here as optional. Okay, we've updated the data model. Let's go ahead and build and run and test things out. And you can see that we've crashed here. And down here in the console, it says the model used to open the store is incompatible with the one used to create the store. If you follow the challenge from video number one, you'll rem remember that the solution was to delete the app from the simulator and then rerun it, which will regenerate the data store on disk with the new model. This time, let's go ahead and try to set things up with a lightweight migration. I'm going to scroll up to the persistent store coordinator property here. And we're going to talk more about the persistent store coordinator and the persistent store and all the other elements of the core data stack in the intermediate series. For now, let's just scroll down here to the line that adds a persistent store to the persistent store coordinator. And you'll notice that there's this options parameter, which is currently nil. This takes an optional dictionary. And if we fill in the options, then we will we'll be able to get those lightweight migrations working. I'm going to add two options to the dictionary. All right, the first one I've added is NS migrate persistent stores automatically option. I'm going to set that to true, and that's going to say automatically do the migration. That's between version one of the model and version two of the model. The next option is NS infer mapping model automatically option, also set to true. To go from data model version one to data model version two, you'd normally have to tell core data exactly what changes you made and then how to make that migration. But since it's a very simple change, all we did was add a relationship and it's inverse, you can actually tell Core Data, hey, I did a very simple change. Could you just automatically infer the mapping model and do that work for me? We've got th both of those two options set. Let's build and run again. And here we go. The app is running, and it's done the migration for us. I'm going to go ahead and select a device. And you can see we've got this device owner field here in the table view. And when I tap that one, it gives me a list of all the people in the database. So the idea is that I should be able to select one of these. Right now, it doesn't do anything. And then when I go back, that person should be set as the owner from here on the device detail screen. OK, let's head back to the code. Let's have a look at the people table view controller and see how that works. The idea here is that that people table view controller has this protocol here called the person picker delegate. And then you can see when, they, when the user selects a person, it's going to call did select person and say who was selected. So what we need to do from the device detail is implement this protocol. And then we'll get a callback when the user selects the person. And then all we need to do is set that on the device. Let's head over to the device detail table view controller. And let's go ahead and implement that. First thing I'm going to do is add an extension to say that I'm going to conform to that protocol make a little room, and then let's add that. There's my extension. Here's the one required method, did select person. And all we need to do is set the device's owner to this person. And believe it or not, that's it. If I go back to the definition of a device, remember, even though this is a relationship, from the implementation here, all it looks like is another property. Just like this name was a string and this is a string, it just looks like an object, although it's actually a relationship behind the scenes. And that means that all I need to do is set it, just like any other property. 
we've got our delegate method set up. All I need to do is make sure that we set ourselves as the delegate. Let me go up to here where we're actually instantiating that person picker and we're going to need a little bit more setup. First I'm setting myself here as the delegate, so I'll get this callback. And then if we already have an owner, we want that person in the person picker to have a check mark next to their name. So I'm setting the selected person property on the person picker to the owner, if I have an owner. Now once the user has selected an owner, we're going to get this callback. And if you remember from the previous videos, we're not actually saving the data anytime until the app closes. But this seems like a good time to save the data when the user assigns a device to a person. Let's go ahead and add a safe save to this part. All I need to do here is call manage object context save, and it can throw an error. I'm just going to catch it and print out an error message here to the console. We've got our data being set, we've got the save, and all we need to do now before we build and run is to display the data. I'm going to go up here to view will appear. You can see we're setting the device name and the device type. Let me add some code to also show the owner's name. I have a little if let binding here. If we do have an owner, then I'm going to set the text to say who it is. I'm just going to access the owner's name. And then if I don't have an owner, we'll just set the text to set device owner. And then that'll prompt the user to tap on that row and then make a selection. Let's go ahead and build and run. Let's go with device number 10 here. I'm going to set an owner. Let's say this belongs to Jane. I'll go back. And you'll see it now says device owner Jane. If I go back, you can see she's got the check mark next to her name here. If I reset it to Bob and I go back, then the owner is now Bob. You'll notice that at the bottom here, we have the second tab of the app showing people. If I select that, we've got the people we have in our core data data store. And if I select a person, right now it doesn't do anything. And the idea here for the challenge is that when you select a person, it should then push another view controller onto the stack showing all of that person's devices. And that's what you'll look at in the upcoming challenge. That's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we like to leave you with a challenge. You've set up the relationship and assigned a device to a person. And your challenge now is to display that data and then be able to show the inverse. Given a person, show a list of all of their devices. You'll find all the details in the challenge document, along with a complete walkthrough in case you need some help along the way. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.